In the film, Iraq's Missing Billions, we saw how companies like Custer Battles took advantage of the situation in Iraq to line their pockets with money from the Iraqi people and from the American people. The first question that comes to mind is why isn't the government doing more to take these companies to task? Documentary producer Robert Greenwald looked for an answer to that question in his film, Iraq for Sale. As usual, the answer is probably simpler than you want it to be. Just follow the money. Let's take a look now at a case study of one of the biggest contractors in Iraq. Here are excerpts from the film, Iraq for Sale, The War Profiteers. In recent years, as we have been actively engaging in war, things the government used to do is now being done by private companies. Food, laundry, and housing were services provided within the military. Now we're in Iraq, you still need a lot of support mechanisms, and there's just not enough military infrastructure to do this. Private contractors come in and they fill the gap. Well, I saw contractors in Iraq doing anywhere from helping fix tanks, helicopter mechanics, pretty much any job that's in the military, there's a civilian contractor right there. There are over 100,000 private contractors working in Iraq, Kuwait, and the surrounding area. This war has been privatized to a greater extent than any other war in history. They're part of a multi-billion dollar industry fueled by your tax dollars, an industry very much in need by the U.S. military. Forty cents out of every dollar Congress controlled now goes to contractors. There's more than 20,000 private military on the ground. They're the second largest armed force in Iraq are private security. They outscale the Brits or any other nation. In the case of Halliburton, most of the contracts they've received have been sole source contracts, which means they're either given the contract, it's just offered to them, or they're the only people that bid on it. A lot of federal officials will defend this saying that this is the only company that can do the work. Conservatives especially, who favor a free market system, should be outraged about the degenerate state of the lack of competition in defense industry. Blenentine Greenhouse, a top contracting officer at the Army Corps of Engineers, alleges favoritism and rule breaking. I walked into a process that was corrupt, that was geared toward preferential treatment to KBR. KBR was pre selected, the duration of the contract was predetermined. The most blatant abuse that I had experienced in my contracting career. The American way is competition, and I cannot sufficiently stress that in the defense industry, when it comes to the big programs, there is not competition. It's monopoly and cartel behavior. It is corrupt, it is corrupting, it is corrosive to our national defense. We showed up, there's nothing there. Our customer is a private coming off patrol who wants a midnight job, and we're there for him. We're doing stuff that you'll never read about in the paper. Everyone had to make a big adjustment over there. I help with that. We got 80,000 troops out of the sand in three months. It was awesome. I'm Ian Dolan. Angela Stevens. Kirk Hansen. My name is Jay Patterson, and I'm proud to work for Halliburton. My name's Ben Carter, and within the first week of being in Iraq, I knew that that wasn't going to be the company that I wanted to be with. Halliburton was hired to provide clean, safe cooking, cleaning, shower water for the military. One of Halliburton's employees saw something wiggling in the water in his toilet bowl. So I went and tested the water in our water storage tanks. There was no chlorine in them, none. The water we showered in every single day was extremely contaminated. And when I talk about contaminated water, I'm saying malaria, typhus, uh, giardia, cryptosporidium. I mean, the list is really, really long. Halliburton is accused by its own employees of exposing troops to contaminated water in Iraq. And I tried to notify the troops that they may be exposed to a serious health risk. I was told that the military was none of my concern. 
They were only concerned with making their profit and didn't care how it may affect the troops. Of the 67 water treatment plants that Halliburton run, 63 of them weren't providing safe water. And the Marines are showering in it every single day. Sorry. I was there to help them. There's a lot of soldiers over there. They might come home without a bullet wound, but there's a lot of them that are going to come home with pathogens in their blood because of Halliburton. And they don't even know to get tested for it uh, unless somebody tells them. And I'm sure Halliburton is not going to be the company to tell them. A Pentagon audit released last night that found the company is overcharging taxpayers. Halliburton Company billed taxpayers for its contract work in Iraq. It is your money that's being used. These contracts are managed under a system called Cost Plus, which is the opposite of trying to save money. It guarantees that everything that you buy will be paid back and reimbursed if it's seen as justified and you'll be given a profit in addition. A cost plus arrangement that critics say leaves little incentive to save. The more taxpayer dollars Halliburton spends, the more Halliburton makes. Cost plus encourages you to run up the cost of a program because you are going to get a percentage of the, the end result. And so there's no incentive to stay at Motel 6. Stay at the Ritz-Carlton uh, in Cutter, folks. The place that they chose for orientation in Kuwait was a huge resort set right on the ocean. Had, I think, three swimming pools. So it was better than the Wyndham in Texas or the Ritz. It was fancied up. Marble floors, mahogany woodwork. It was just beautiful. They had sea dews, jet skis they could use. You could go and rent wave runners and go out and play in the water. We were renting wave runners, and we got paid by the hour to do it. I was told this, don't question it, enjoy it. Several government agencies are currently investigating if Halliburton overcharged for work already completed in Iraq. They had five-star meals catered in every day. It was so lavish. Rows of vegetable platters, beef platters, fish platters. It's a cost plus contract. KBR looked at it, the more money we spend, that's the more money we get in our pockets. We had it made over there compared to the military. I mean, those guys were living in tents, and we had air-conditioned private hooches. The tents that we were staying in were completely muggy, and everybody was getting sick with respiratory infections. They're getting paid millions of dollars. Why can't they even give us a tent that doesn't make us sick to live in it? The soldiers are sleeping on these little cots out in the middle of the desert. While these KBR executives are driving these $40,000 vehicles, they and their secretaries are driving at least a thirty to forty thousand dollar vehicle. This secretary lives in this complex, eats her meals in this complex, has her laundry delivered to her, has no reason to go anywhere at any time, but has a brand new top of the line Ford or Chevy pickup with everything imaginable on it that you could put on it. Chrome rims and leather interior and CD players and all these extra amenities that, you know, you don't really need in wartime. Why do they need an H-2 Hummer? Why do they have Cadillac Escalades in Iraq for Halliburton managers? What is the purpose? One invoice that I saw was for about $7,000 for one month for a SUV on a lease. It was a three-year contract comes up to uh, roughly $250,000. A vehicle that you and I could purchase at the local dealership for probably top of the line $45,000. And the taxpayer paid $250,000 and never did own the vehicle. They got the wrong equipment, ordered the wrong stuff. Computers, ceiling boxes, new vehicles, they'd push them out in what they called burn pits. 